As the Treasurer, Jim Chalmers, told us on Sunday Agenda yesterday, he's hopeful the worst of the inflation spike may be behind us. New figures on the cost of living will be out on Wednesday, with some hope 2023 could be the year of a return to normal for the nation's economy. Let's get some analysis. Dr Pradeep Phillip is with me. He's the head of Deloitte Access Economics. Pradeep, thanks for your time as always. I've read your analysis that you've uh, done today. You're actually calling for for the nation to commit to a new normal in 2023. What do you mean by that? Absolutely, Kieran. Uh, you know, sometimes we hang on to the past unnecessarily and forget that our job is to create tomorrow. And uh, the return to normal has been something we held on to through last year. And we've been through some tough economic times. And now is the time to build, to invest, to create things that build growth and prosperity in the future. And so that's what we're calling for. We're calling for uh, the time to increase our investment in machinery, plant and equipment, to increase our effort on innovation uh, because consumer preferences are changing. We need to meet the market of tomorrow and we need to invest in our skills because if we do these things, we start to arrest what has been a core feature of our economy of the last few years, which is a decline in productivity. Now, I spoke to the Treasurer yesterday about the prospects for, for China. The COVID zero policy has had a huge impact, of course, not just on China's growth, but the international uh, economy as well. You've suggested that it will have profound consequences emerging from COVID zero, but they could be profoundly positive, couldn't they, Pradeep, with... China roaring back in terms of growth throughout the year, that would be a huge benefit to, to Australia as well. Ab absolutely, Kieran. Uh, we see this in the positive. We see the relaxing of the COVID zero policy in China as being good for the global economy and the Australian economy, but probably not necessarily in the short term, but certainly in the medium term. In the short term, uh, we know that it'll cause some disruption in China. Uh, supply chains will remain disrupted uh, as they go through this period of opening up. Uh, but ultimately, as you point out, Kieran, this is good for Australia and good for the global economy. As we await the CPI figures this Wednesday, you warn that the global inflationary environment could be longer than people might hope for because of the ongoing conflict in Ukraine. But are there signs... That, that elements of it are, are softening. I think there was a hope from the federal government, obviously, that the rate rise cycle may have, may have peaked and uh, we might have seen the last of the rate rises. What's your read on it? Uh, absolutely, Kieran. We, we think inflation in Australia uh, will have peaked in the December quarter, as we'll find out on Wednesday. Um, and we see signs that inflation is not out of control in Australia and some things that are coming back. And what is it that's pulling it back? Where well, we're seeing the impact of eight interest rate rises on the trot, uh, starting to impact on consumer spending. Consumer spending makes up about 60% of uh, our economic growth. And we're seeing that run out of road. Uh, we're seeing consumers starting to be hit on three fronts. One is inflation has reduced their purchasing power. The second, the reaction to inflation has been higher interest rates, and that's reducing their inflation power, and there's more of that impact to come uh, this year. And the third is that real wages uh, aren't growing anywhere near what they should be. And so if we think about that, this is reducing the purchasing power of consumers. And one of the things that's been talked about, uh, Kieran, is that this year we see a large number of fixed uh, mortgage interest rates uh, coming off. So back in 2021, there were some 3.3 million uh, mortgages written. About 35% uh, of those, about 1.1 million of those were fixed. And of that, about 700,000 of them are coming off the fixed mortgage rates, which were around 2% or lower. Now yeah. they're faced with 5.6% or higher. And the Reserve Bank tells us that of that 700,000, about 60% of them will face an increase in their mortgage repayment of between 40 and 60%. Now, that's a big impost on mm. what consumers can go out and spend, which means the economy will slow even more, which is why we think the Reserve Bank 
should not be increasing interest rates any further because we think that increases the risk of recession.